So I've trained over the course of my career hundreds of people on how to respond to an opioid overdose. I've trained people who are actively using, I've trained medical professionals, and I've trained people in the community. And I tell them, be calm, you can do this. Well, <laughs> turns out not so easy to do. Um, your nerves take over, your, nothing is where it's supposed to be, people who are responding are unclear of their roles, and it is just scary. We responded where we found a young woman, non-responsive, with her baby in a stroller right next to her. It's frightening. It's really frightening. Yeah, and upsetting. It's, you know, with the young woman with the baby in her stroller, Everybody who responded was just so upset afterward. Those are the times you realize you need to have a plan. Your entire staff needs to be aware of the plan. And part of the plan should definitely include a post-event staff debrief. People who use drugs may seek out restrooms or other hidden areas. They are usually looking for a safe place to use drugs. This includes restrooms inside healthcare buildings like hospitals that are often clean, well lit, and staffed with nearby professionals who can provide help if needed. Healthcare professionals need to be prepared to respond to overdoses in their facilities, particularly in hidden areas such as restrooms. Like other emergency situations, a safe and swift response to an overdose requires a clear protocol. Staff must be trained on how to carry out the protocol. The American Heart Association incorporates early naloxone administration into its basic life support response for an unresponsive patient. Healthcare professionals may want to develop specific measures to make restrooms safer in the event of an overdose. Educational messages about reducing the risk of overdose can be posted near restrooms. Restrooms can be outfitted with a secure sharps container to help patients and staff avoid needle sticks. Healthcare organizations, like hospitals, can put in place a monitoring program such as regular checks of restrooms by staff, installing timers, or implementing an alert system using sensors that detect a lack of motion. Place all emergency equipment needed to manage a respiratory arrest near restrooms or other areas at risk for overdoses. When an overdose response is initiated, early responders will have the tools needed to perform basic life support until additional help arrives. When staff arrive at an overdose response, they need to survey the scene for safety. Sharps must be found and disposed of immediately. Contrary to common belief, the presence of a powder poses minuscule risk to responders. For an unresponsive person, naloxone should be administered as soon as possible, followed by the basic life support response that follows protocol. A person who has received naloxone is often disoriented and frightened as he or she regains consciousness. Responders should give the person space reassurance that he or she is safe and offer help. It is unusual for a rescued person to lash out. More commonly, the person may want to flee. Every effort should be made to offer a next step for the rescued person. Tell the person that he or she can receive treatment on demand if it is available. A post-event debrief is recommended to improve response to an on-site overdose and help staff process a difficult emotional event. An incident report should be filed following the event based on organizational guidelines. Having formal overdose response training can help prepare staff to respond to overdoses and reduce stigma associated with people who use drugs. Advanced planning and regular overdose response drills are an essential part of preparing staff. It is important to include non-clinical personnel in overdose response training, as they are often the first to witness a potential overdose. Healthcare organizations need to be prepared to respond to an overdose at any time. Make a plan. Practice the plan. Implement the plan.